When will the new U.S. sanction be imposed on Lebanese politicians? Well, I'm not in the administration anymore, so I, I can't tell you what the administration is, is going to do. Uh, I know that uh, when I was in the Trump administration, you know, we um, had a, a series of uh, designations that we were going to make, and then we made a few, and the Biden administration appears to be uh, following the same policy. They launched a set of, of sanctions that were consistent with what we did in October. Uh, so I'd expect more, but I couldn't tell you when. I have another question that uh, that's also related to this topic. So uh, you know that the parliamentary elections are coming uh, are coming soon. Uh, I'd like to know how uh, the people that are running for parli for parliament are going to be able to fund their campaign and have access to their financial estate uh, while they're sanctioned. How would that work for them? I don't know what uh, people like uh, Gibran Basile are, are going to do. I mean, they've got a, a political party behind them uh, that presumably has some funding, although I don't know if these uh, FPM funds are, are uh, commingled at all with the SEALs funds. But uh, these are probably out of reach of the United States government. Uh, in other words, when we designate, um, we uh, attach accounts that we can get to. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't think Jubam Basile has accounts in in, uh, in the United States, so I don't know if we've seized anything. Well, speaking of Jubram Basile, do you think he'll be able to lift the sanctions that are imposed on him? Will he be able to uh, have a recourse or, or um, have a way of getting them lifted? Well, there there is recourse. Anyone can, uh, uh, there's a process where you can uh, get a lawyer and uh, go through a process in the United States, ask to see uh, the evidence that is uh, gathered against you. Uh, but these packages are um, compiled by Treasury. They are uh, large amounts of information. Uh, that's gathered over time and reviewed by a series of lawyers to ensure they meet a certain standard. So uh, it's oftentimes very difficult to get removed um, from uh, or uh, listed. So would you say you have a very solid case against him? Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's um, a, a convincing package, just like uh, the packages uh, against uh, Yosef Finianos and like Hassan Khalil and uh, like the one that was prepared uh, against Jamil Syed, Danny Khoury, and Adelar. Would that minimize his chances of becoming president? Well, that's for the Lebanese people to decide. You know, the United States doesn't say who Lebanon's president can't, uh, can't be. Um, but it seems to me that the Lebanese people have a very serious problem with corruption in their country. Uh, and the United States uh, designated uh, Jerome Steele, among others, um, under the global Magnitsky sanctions for corruption. So if um, you know, the left people decide that they want to elect someone that the United States has determined is corrupt, and, and who, by the way, um, I think an uh, enormous number of Lebanese believe it's corrupt as well, um, then that's their decision. But there are consequences for that. Okay, what would be those what would those uh, consequences be? For example, well, I, I think that um, you're not going to have a, a chief executive of, of Lebanon who's designated for corruption coming to visit uh, the United States, for example. Although you know the United States has dealt with the uh, Lebanese government that uh, periodically had ministers uh, that were Hezbollah, you know that. Uh, March 14th was for a period of time in coalition government with Hezbollah. There were ministers um, for Hezbollah, and the United States government worked still um, with those ministries, but just not with those ministers. Well, I know that the U.S. administration considers Hezbollah as a uh, terrorist organization. So how would you explain that uh, the French, uh, mainly President Macron, uh, is actually having a conversation with Hezbollah currently, especially after the Beirut blast. How would you describe this initiative? Well, this has been uh, a long-standing um, relationship that the French um, have 
um, this uh, fiction. There are allegedly a small handful of travel bans for some Lebanese individuals or political elites, so they can't go to France. Um, but uh, France still has not gone public with, with who those particular uh, Lebanese officials are. I think that, uh, you know, if you're going to threaten and you're not going to follow through, obviously, um, uh, Lebanese political elites who are corrupt or are um, obstructing um, uh, the uh, reforms that would allow Lebanon to uh, get an IMF program and help get out of this financial disaster that is basically um, hurting so many Lebanese. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, it's not an effective strategy to cajole um, and, um, and keep on meeting with these people and, and there not be any consequences. We're already, what, um, more than a year after the port blast, um, and we're still basically uh, in the same situation. If you read the last IMF report, it does appear that uh, they're making a great deal of progress moving forward toward, uh, toward these reforms. Then what would you say uh, about uh, the U.S. administration right now? So would Biden administration have a, a tougher approach to sanctions than the previous administration, in your opinion? Uh, I wouldn't say tougher uh, at all. I mean, they've got uh, the negotiations with the Iranians going on right now. And the last time this happened during the Obama administration, I, I think we saw um, the, uh, the, the administration back off of uh, putting pressure on, on Hezbollah, et cetera, and Iranian proxies. 